Reflective Practice in Early Childhood Care and Education. Roscommon County Child Care Committee, in collaboration with Longford County Child Care Committee and the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment, are delighted to bring you this podcast where we will discuss how, as part of our busy day as early childhood care and educational leaders, do we really reflect on what is really happening for that individual's child, instead of just going with the plan of the day. For me, reflective practice is at the heart of so much of what we're doing in early education. How are we observing, really noticing what's happening in our environments with children, with teachers, with supervisors? What is it that's happening? How do we think about it, reflect on it, plan on it, move forward? I think so much of our work, because it's a very busy day being with children, people are going through the motions. Time for the playtime, time for the story. What are children doing? What are children interested in? What really excites them? When are they lighting up? When are teachers working in sync? When are teachers <clears throat> working a little bit against each other? So how do we take moments to pause, to really see what's happening, to reflect on it, and then plan what we're doing next? And I see that happening in every aspect of learning as well as in the social-emotional environment. Often we have children that are challenging us for some reason, and that child becomes the difficult child, the child that can't sit still, the child that annoys each other. What's really happening with that child? When is that child at its best? And how do we bring that out more and more instead of going with the label or the name? <clears throat> so the more we move into reflective practice, the more we create time and space to really pause and to look at things, the more we're going to be able to figure things out on a deeper level and to be planful and intentional in a much deeper level. If I know the children were so excited today about the bubbles, what am I doing tomorrow? What were they asking? What were they questioning? What could I think of that would do this in a different way, that would further their learning instead of, oh, tomorrow's farm animals? instead of following up with that thread and being reflective, happens far too often. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about the steps to becoming a reflective practitioner? I think the, the first, you know, the overarching step is being more mindful. How are we slowing things down enough that we're observing and noticing? So if I'm going to start being more reflective, how do I really see what those children are doing? How do I observe that child that might be a challenge in a very different way? Not the same old way I've looked every day. How do I look at that child in a different time, in a different space, and take some notes and document that? How do I observe the playtime in a different way? How do I observe my interactions with my co-teachers in a different way? And then how do we have dialogues around that? <clears throat> and there's many useful protocols. The Project Zero um, program at Harvard, which is doing extensive research on reflective practice in schools has a very simple one. What do you see? What do you think? What do you wonder? How do we look at our situations through that lens? And how do we have dialogues with teachers in that lens? What do they see? Because so often what we talk about is what we think. This child is difficult. Oh, no one likes the science center. Those are not observations. Those are thoughts. So really recording what we see having meaningful dialogues about what we think. And what do we wonder? I wonder what I could do tomorrow. I wonder if I changed this. I wonder if we did something different. So using a protocol to move through that and then being very planful and intentional about the actions you're going to do later that day, later that week, but really utilizing that. And this is something we see very often in the, you know, embedded in all of the Reggio Emilia schools. How are they looking at what excites children and then creating environments and learning experiences around that? <clears throat> when that reflective practice kicks in, there's more engagement, there's more intentionality, there's more focus. One thing that really has grounded me in reflective practice is the work in the Reggio schools, and Loris Malaguzzi, I feel, has summed this up beautifully in this quote that I'd like to share with you today. Teachers, like children, and everyone else feel the need to grow in their competencies. They want to transform experiences into thoughts, thoughts into reflections, and reflections into new thoughts and actions. 
And I think that's why this is so powerful to me is we're moving towards new thoughts. I think so much of the time in our field we stay in the same old practices. And, uh, you know, that, that's the way we've always done it syndrome. And reflective practice helps us move away from the way we've always done it into new ways of being and working with children. And that's where the sort of the magic and the power lies.